Here's my first project and my first thoughts on Silhouette Web. Silhouette Web is Silhouette's online version of Silhouette Studio. And I'm not going to lie, at first I had a real hard time adjusting, but I think I'm getting the hang of it and I might just love it. Hi, I'm Brenda Lambert. I'm a TJC licensed instructor for Silhouette. You've found your way to Silhouette Success and if you are looking for tips and tricks and tutorials on Silhouette and various craft projects, you're going to want to hit the subscribe button down below because I'm going to have a lot more videos on the Silhouette web coming out as we go. Silhouette also has new products out and you better believe that I will be purchasing them as quickly as I can. We've got all kinds of new information to cover today, so let's get started. We're going to start off real simple here. We're going to add some text and we are going to add a basic image using the trace feature. Let's start with the text. When you click on add text, You'll see you have about a million choices of fonts that you can use from around the web. And the issue that I have with this is that it doesn't show up like it will once it's typed out. So it takes a lot of time to go through and find what you want. It's much easier if you use the fonts that are in your Silhouette library. And I only have two saved to my library at this point, but we will fix that. Right now, I'm just going to go with Monsoon. So I can click on Monsoon and this box pops up on my design mat. It says new text. Now you do not need to clear that out. You can just start typing. I'm going to go with one more page. It'll make a super cute bookmark. Let's click off of that and back on to select it and then choose a fill color. I'm just going to go with red for right now because it's super easy to see. I'm working with clear acrylic bookmarks and the text always shows up better if there's a little something behind it. So let's go to our trace panel and we are going to upload a new image. I did grab these brush strokes from Creative Fabrica and I looked for brush strokes that were relatively simple and all black in color so that they would get a nice trace and I think I like this one. Now that has brought the image in, we just need to trace it and we can trace all, we can trace outside, or we can trace and detach. If we trace all and move our threshold, you'll see that it brings up the box around the PNG. That's not what we want. What we need to do is click on invert trace and you can see the lines show up. So the outline is trace now and trace outside or trace all would work on this because there is no inside detail. So we can click on either one of these and click apply and just the outline is going to come in. These are just cut lines and we can fill with whatever color we like. Of course, these need to be scaled down to fit the design area, but we need to bring one more page to the front and you can do that here. Click on that little arrow. One more page is selected. Let's choose bring to front. And it looks like these have to be overlapping for that feature to work. Now this is ready to scale to size, but I wanted to show you the trace and detach real quick. So let's click on that and apply, and that brings in the colored version. Let's click on the X to close that out. My bookmarks are quite large. I have a design area of about two inches by five inches to work with. Let's select the brush stroke, and we can use this arrow here to scale it down a bit. And I am using the numbers on the grid to get it sized. Once that is scaled to the right size, I can bring one more page over and scale that down as well. And I think that will look good. Now I'm going to set my text over to one side, keep the brush stroke over in this corner. And when we send it to cut, since both of these are going to be cut out of vinyl, we can just send it through. I'm going to get my cutting mat set up and then we will look at sending this through. I did go through and raid my scrap in for this. It's a small project and honestly, it is a test project. So we're just going to see how this goes with some scraps. Now the machine is loaded. I need to turn the Bluetooth on 
so that it will pair with the software. Now back in the software, we can go to the send page and come down here and scan for devices. Right away, the Cameo 5 has popped up. I'm going to click on that and then click on pair. The material is set to cardstock plain. Let's change that over to vinyl. I'm going to choose matte and continue. I do want to cut, so let's continue. And we are using the auto blade, continue. When I am cutting vinyl on the Cameo 5, I like to bump my blade up by one. So let's go ahead and modify the settings and click this arrow. Now our blade depth is two instead of one. Let's save the changes and we will need to add a material name for this. I'm going to call it Adhesive Vinyl Cameo 5 and click on Confirm. Again, we are going to save the changes and click back, I think. Okay, now my material is coming in at Adhesive Vinyl Cameo 5 and it should have the blade depth of 2, which is what I wanted. When we look over at this side, we can see that our cut lines are lit up, so that is good. We will be using Tool 1, so the lines should be red, not blue. We're cutting this out of adhesive vinyl, so we do not need to mirror. Let's go ahead and click on Continue. When you get to this point in the Send page, it offers up a little bit more information here as to how to load the blade and the mat and all of that stuff. If you click Continue, it will shuffle through all of these different tips and tricks, or you can skip the instructions. The first few videos that I do on this, I am going to just continue and run through the extra instructions. After a while, I will probably get to the point where I skip the instructions. So it says load the auto blade into the left tool holder of the Cameo 5. We can click Continue. And then it says auto blade detected. Perfect. Place media on matte, arranging it to match the matte preview. We did that. Click continue. For loading the mat, it says line the cutting mat up with the left roller and then press the load button on your machine. We did that. Let's continue. And then it says make it. Your job is ready. We can go ahead and click send. The project was sent immediately to the machine to cut. I was actually quite impressed by this. I thought there would be a delay or honestly, I was expecting some sort of issue throughout this process, but we're looking good. When you're doing a smaller project, it's sometimes hard to check the cut before you unload it, but you gotta just kind of get in there and lift the vinyl and see if it cut through. This looks great. So I'm going to unload the mat and pull these pieces up off of cutting mat. are two different types of vinyl so I'm hoping that this one did as well as the silver. Beautiful. I have removed the protective plastic from my acrylic blank. I'm just going to wipe it down real quick with a bit of rubbing alcohol. Make sure there's no oil or lint on there. Then I'm going to apply one more page to one side of the blank and I'm going to place the silver brush stroke on the other. So both sides lay nice and flat. Let's start with the silver so we can get the words placed properly. If you're having a hard time seeing the outline of your blank, sometimes it helps to put it on a solid color piece of paper. It's especially helpful when you're getting older and your eyeballs do not work as well anymore. There are quite a few bubbles in that. I can try to get some of them out. I don't even know what happened there. I should have used the wet method on this. If you put a little bit of water with just a tiny bit of soap on the blank, you can place your vinyl down better, get it positioned without it sticking completely, and you eliminate all of these air bubbles. And I know better 
with a shiny vinyl. I know better and I did it anyway. So learn from my mistakes here. You can poke little holes in there to let that trapped air out and then just smooth it down. This is not going to be perfect, but once I get the air out, it will be better. All right, not quite perfect, but quite a bit better. Let's work on the text now on the other side. These bookmarks, I got them from Amazon. They came with this nice ribbon instead of putting a tassel on the end of it. I thought this was super cute as well. Overall, I'm super impressed with Silhouette Web and my little project. Now go create something amazing and I'll see you in the next video.